everyone that's here today. It's a blessing to be back in the house of the Lord again. We celebrate Men's Day. You know, I celebrate Men's Day every day because of my man. <laughs> you know, we thank God that you're here in the house of the Lord. Amen. Uh, at this time, we have the unity, uh, the male course to come. About the light, male course to come. I will acquire you. We thank God for you that you are here today. You know, the Lord is good yes, all the is. time. We ought to always praise His holy name. For He's worthy of all our praise. You know, God is good. And we all know that. We got a day. Sometimes we, we get complacent the way we live. But we ought to always praise the Lord because he, He's a wise God. One we should always give praise and honor. When they get ready, we ought to go. I was glad when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord, and our picture standing in our gates told Jerusalem. Let us stand at this time and receive our choir this time. Amen. You ready now? <laughs> Spirit, 
that you move and do these things. Yeah. And oh God, we thank you for it right now. Thank you. Bless everyone that's here. Yes. And oh God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, yes. for you being who you are. Yes. And oh God, you say, let everything be done decent in order. Yes. And oh God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, yes. for you are an orderly God. Yes. And we thank you for being an orderly God. Yes. And oh God, we thank you for everything. Yes. You're so good. Yes. And we thank you for being so good to all of us. Yes. And oh God, we so helpful to give you name to praise and go with the man's servant. Yes. That's going to break the bread of life until thy people. Yes. And open up the hearts of thy people. Let them receive the word. Yes. Someone needs you, Heavenly Father. Yes. Oh God, someone don't know you in the part of their sins. Yeah. Oh God, right now, Heavenly Father, we pray that you will open up the hearts. Yes, Lord. And let them receive your word. Yes, Lord. And oh God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we don't pray. Amen. I'm nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody.
have scripture, and then we have prayer by uh, Cedric Springfield, and then we have prayer by Charles Spring in that order. And then we have the Mayor of Unity members come and give us another selection. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so if you have your Bibles, you will turn to me to um, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 4 through 18. When you have it, say amen. 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 And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the, in the nurture and admission of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. Yes. Not with our service as men pleasures, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service, as to the Lord and not to men, knowing whatsoever good thing any man doeth. The same shall he receive of the Lord, with him, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wills of the devil, but we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but yes. against um, principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, mm -hmm. that, ye be, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, yes. having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your lions girt about with the tr about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, yes. and your feet showed with the pre preparation. preparation of gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father God, we come before you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Asking all things in Jesus' name, Father. Yes. Lord, for he died for that, Lord yes. God. A sacrifice that never had to be sacrificed no more. Lord, we come straight to the Holy and the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, in his name. Lord, you told us that if we would ask anything in his name, we could receive it. Yes. And where two or three are gathered together, there we would be in the midst. Yes. Father, we come before you as a church family, Lord. Father God, asking right now, Lord, if we find anything in our hearts, Lord, yes. any iniquity, yes. Lord. While we stand on one accord, anything that would hinder this prayer, Lord, we ask that you forgive us, Lord. Create in us clean hearts and renew within us the right spirit, Father God. And then we thank you for forgiving us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, then we come to give you praise. Yes, for truly you are God and good to be praised at all times and at any time, Father, in any given situation, you still God. Yes. Father, you said that all things work for the good of those that love the Lord and call by his purpose. Yes. We believe that, Father God, so yes. we don't worry about nothing. But you didn't give us the spirit of fear. Yes, Lord. Lord, but we ask, Lord, that you bind us together in one Christian yes, love. Lord, and then use the weapon that you gave us, Lord, to yes, pray for Lord. one yes. another, Lord. And to pray the prayers of faith, Lord. Yes. God, we know that you can do it, Lord, because you did it in our life. You yes. did it in Sister Tammy's life. You did it in Brother Shabbat's life. Yes. Lord, you ain't no stranger to us, Lord, when yes. it comes to prayer, Lord. And we don't just do it, Lord, when something happens back to God. We do it all the time, Lord. Yes. And we thank you for that, Father God. Lord. We thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord. What he did, he didn't have to do it, Lord. But while we were yet sinners, Christ came and died for us, Lord. Yes, you grafted Lord. us into your family through his death and resurrection. And we thank you for that, Lord. Right. Lord, now we ask that you come together in our midst, Lord. Yes, Lord, if there's anybody in here, Lord, that needs any healing, Lord, anything, Lord. Yes, Lord. We stand in on one accord, Lord, and together, Lord. Yes, yes. Father God, we ask that you stop by, Lord, yes, Lord. and open up the eyes, Lord. 
touch their hearts, Lord. Yes. Whatever yes. going on in their life, Lord God, we ask right now, Lord God, not in our church alone, but church throughout all the world, Father, yes. beginning in Israel, Lord God. But yes. we thank you for it, Father God, in Jesus' name, Father. We count it done. Yes. Yes. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
I mean, the acknowledgement, I mean, uh, well, what is it? Now, 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 I'm sorry. All right, acknowledgement, I mean, now, Pastor Ben, ben Artist, Mount Calvary, Mount Baptist Church family, thank you uh, for taking this opportunity to thank you all, all for your uh, outpouring of love and continued support. This is Men's Day. We thank God for that. A special thanks for from the pastor, uh, Benny Corbett, and uh, Congregation of Abundant Love Ministry, uh, 9101 U.S. Highway 11, Willow, in North Carolina, uh, 28478, for uh, bringing the word and thanks to the community church and so yes, uh, Brian Lee, the other uh, uplifting music. Thanks, thanks again. God bless all. All right, the announcement of this church or in order. Um, Mount
Mm -hmm. So we thank God for you. All of you know, we thank God for you. We thank God that you're here. You know, it's good to have leaders in the house of the Lord. Amen. And we acknowledge you. It's a blessing that you're here. Because, and the Lord said, pray that he send more workers into the vineyard. Because the fields are white and they're red. We thank God for you. Amen. At this time, at this time, we have the introduction of the speaker, by Deacon Jones. At this time, and after Deacon Jones comes, I'm not gonna get back up. Now. I'm, like, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sit out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do the slow low by Brian Lee, and then we're gonna have a community choir come back in that order. I want to take my seat. I'm going to take my seat for the last time. Thank God. <laughs> Good afternoon. That's all I can do. I have the Father, Lord, and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the source of my life. I'm going to do some, introduce to some, some, and present to others. All right. Pastor Benny Collett. Yes. He's a veteran of two wall, gut wall, the death stand wall. He's been in law enforcement for all his life. With the highway patrol department, sheriff's department, and police department. And right now, he's, he's, he's been for two years, he's been in training to be a babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Good job, and he's playing, they can hurt by that. I hope he graduate this year. <laughs> His grandson and my great great grandson. But uh, he's a man of God. He's a pastor of Bundle Love Church on Highway 11 in Wood. Thank him for his grace and ability. Everybody. First and foremost, giving all prayer, you sing glory to God and to uh, Reverend Artis and uh, First Lady Diana, also my cousin. And uh, whenever you call me to come here and sing, you know, like well, for this particular program or any program, I'm right here. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. How did I make it through these years? That's all right. How did I make it this far? Through the valleys and over the hills. I know it had to be God. How did I make it through the storm? How did I make it through the rain? Oh, yes. If you want to know yes. just how I got here, that's all right. It's so easy yes. to explain. Yes. It was God's grace. It's God's grace. It was God's grace. It's God's grace. It was God's grace. It's God's grace. It's amazing grace. It's God's grace. I made it this far.
We give all to God the spirit of Christ. Yeah. For being back in the house of prayer just one more time. Mm -hmm. I do want to say that when you see me eating a piece of candy, it is not candy just to be eating this so up. It's for my sugar. God needs to bring my sugar up. Amen. Amen. Before we get started, I was thinking about the song when they say remember. Mm -hmm. And also remember, Ryan always come in at a certain part and she would say, remember, she had, she had that sweet spot. Mm -hmm. When she would come in and make it sound even better. Mm -hmm. And I think it's only fair to call the elders of the church and as we stand to our feet. Amen. And she's in the hospital, yes, sir. knowing that if she was here, Amen. Amen. she would make no excuses how she felt. Yes, she's the same when she's sick, when she's well, yes, when she's in pain. Yes, the Bible tells her you touch and agree on anything. Yes, that he would do. God is a healer yes, and a deliverer. Yes, I'm so glad that we know a man yes, that answers prayer. Yes, a man that say what's well, impossible to man is possible to God. Yes, Anything the doctors can't do, God can do. Yes, we don't know the circumstances of what she's going through. Yes. But I believe God yes, is in the mix. Yes, Nothing is over yes. until God says it's over. Right. Right. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, yes. God, we ask you to remember Vine right yes. now. Yes. We ask you, God, right now, if you will, yes. take time right now. Yes. Go to the hospital where yes. she's at. Yes. What room number she's in, God? Yes. Lord, I want you to let her know somebody remembering her right now. On this very morning. On this men's day. Oh, Father, we just want to give you praise. God, because we know that you're already there. God, I thank you right now, God. We ask you to heal, deliver, set free right now in the name of Jesus. In the midst of all the people, yes. God, you say when two or three yes. are gathered in your name, that you're in the midst, God. Yes. God, we ask this in your name. Yes. Oh, God, and we touch and agree. You say, whatever you call upon your name, Lord, that you yes. do. You tell us in the word, is there anything yes. too hard yes. for him? There's nothing too hard. God, we receive your prayer. Yes, God. And we thank you, God, yes, for your healing power. Yes, God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yes, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All the men might not want to acknowledge. Thank you, Lord. But she is the backbone sometimes to help. She plays the good time. I'm going to tell you the truth. She even helps me. I can go to a restaurant. Sometime I've been to a restaurant and she was there. And I had the baby. And I was wondering how I was going to use the restroom with him. And I saw her in the restaurant with her husband. I didn't have time to say hi or anything. I just dropped the baby to her. <laughs> and moved on. That's all right. She just, she, and he loves her. He loves her. First of all, we give honor to uh, Pastor Artists of the Spirit Church in Mount Calvary. And we honor uh, Assistant Pastor Ben Artis. And also, we honor uh, the true man, man of God, Apostle Anderson. We thank God for um, him being here this morning and supporting this service. Amen. We thank God again also for uh, Pastor Artis back there in the back. And we heard her last Sunday, I think it was, for Women's Day. She's done an awesome job. Amen. And we thank God also for uh, 
Minister Holmes for being in the midst this morning. Amen. And also I give honor to my wife and her yes. sister pastor yes. for the Wonder Love Ministry this morning. Amen. And we like to honor uh, this men choir for singing today. We thank you for this. deacons and trustees in both male and female. And we do honor a pillar of the community this morning. We see Brother David Johnson in the building and his wife, Jill. If you don't know, he owns the business right across the road right there. And he's been a pillar in this community for as long as I've known him, and he's been a good man. Amen. Amen. We thank God for seeing him here on this men's day. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, mm -hmm. I'd like for you to turn with me to the book of St. Luke, the 14th chapter, in the 15th verse. When all have it, say amen. 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 We're going to try to be brief if you uh, can give me the amen, even if you're faking it. You know how to say so, because everybody don't like that you have to say. Amen. So even if you fake it, just give me an amen. Hallelujah. I'll be right on out of your way. Amen. But if you hold me up, then I'll be here just, just to talk. But the word reads this morning, and it reads when one of those at the table with him heard this. He said to Jesus, blessed is the man who we eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servants to tell those who had been invited, come for everything is ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. And the first said, I just bought a field mm -hmm. and I must go see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I just bought five yokes of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. And still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. And the servant came back and reported this to his master. And then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets, in the alleys, in the towns, and bring in the poor. The cripple, yeah. the blind, yeah. and the lame. Yeah. Sir, the servant said, what you all has been done. Mm -hmm. But there's still room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and the country lanes and make them come in so that my house will be full. Verse 24 says, I tell you, not one of those men who was invited will get a taste of my banquet. And if I can use just for a subject briefly, excuses. What is the definition of an excuse. 
That which is to make an offense of a crime seem less serious. Mm -hmm. Or something you use to justify a fault. Yes. To find, excuse, to make an apology, to try to remove blame, to let off from doing something, pass the fault, justify. You can define excuse as a plea offering for release from the obligation or a promise. Oh, Have you ever met anybody that got an excuse? Uh -huh. Church folks, y'all might as well go ahead and say you know you have made excuses. Yes. Amen. 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 There are times when you don't want to go to work. Yes. Call the boss man. That's the favorite one is I got stomach problems. <laughs> Can't use headache. But when you say you got stomach problems, you feel like that's a good excuse. Excuses. And sometimes you don't even know your children listen to what you say. They learn from their parents. And then we wonder why they do the same thing. We live in a time now where nothing is kept under the hat anymore. When we look around, people make excuses. You know, you turn your TV on, your radio on, and then people are capitalizing on certain issues. Sexual preference. We have to have an excuse for your preference now. And we can't even talk about it because then we have to make an excuse because uh, we don't want to offend nobody. Yes, that's right. That's right. But all we have to do is if, if we look at what the word says, you shouldn't have to make an excuse. Amen. Broken marriages. You're always talking about an excuse why your marriage is broken up when it should be two trying to work it out Amen. and not one That's right. having children out of wedlock I know these subjects is something that we don't like to talk about but we make excuses for not talking about these subjects Using drugs and alcohol. Y'all yeah, yeah. around here thinking that these children ain't watching what you do. They know where you hide the liquor. <laughs> they know where the drugs at. And you think you being sneaky. Living together without being married. We make an excuse for that. We laugh at these days and even applaud these issues. And we think these issues are funny. And we think this is what going to get us through. What used to be wrong is now right. We used to talk about these subjects. You didn't even have to talk about it sometime because you were already condemned when you walked into the house of God. But now people can walk in the house of God and feel no grief, no guilt. They can do anything, say anything, and feel no grief. And our problem is not that we are hesitating 
to admit anything. Our problem is that we're learning to what? Justify yes. everything we do. Amen. Whether it's wrong. Yeah. You can sit right in the pulpit and people justify why they're dancing in the pool. Justifying why they're hanging out with certain people. The Bible tells, come from out from among them and be ye what? Separated. There must be a separation. Because the Bible tells one day there's going to be a separation. And that we're going to have to be separated from the good in the bad. And one day, you're going to have to stand before the man. And be judged. For what you've done in this body. You will be judged. And there be no excuse that you can stand before God and give. I have been in court sometimes and, and you will see that people can come up with some uh, uh, crazy excuses. Why they done something. And sometimes the judge will buy it. But I know a judge Yes. 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 Amen. He ain't no baby no more. Yes. Yes. He is the lion yes. Yes. of Judea. Yes. 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 And they tell me even the Bible tells us even in the dreams mm -hmm. when these great prophets would see him in a dream. Yes. They had they couldn't even speak because of his holiness. Amen. They fall down on the ground because his holiness. Amen. Because everywhere God is, there's nothing but holiness. Amen. And I want you to just think about it even in heaven when the, 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 the men, the elders that are around the throne, when the presence of God, when they step into the presence of God, they have to bow down. The Bible tells us every knee shall bow. In heaven, in the earth, in below. You can stand and tell all the lies and excuses all you want. But when you stand before the man, if you can. Amen. And start making, I would have done this. And I would have done that. Yes. But first of all, when you stand at that throne, and you get at the wrong throne, yes. your judgment has already yes. been handed down. Amen. Only thing we're working about is punishment. Yeah. Who gets what? Yeah. And there be no excuse. Yeah. Yeah. I hear people say all the time, he's a loving God. He won't send me to hell. You keep on living. <laughs> they send you to jail, don't you, when you're wrong, don't they? What you think God would do when he cast you into the outer darkness Amen. where there be what? Weeping and gnashing. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And whatever we do is say we already justify what we have done or what we might do in order to write it in our own eyes. But people don't understand that God sees you. Yes. Yes. Excuses. Yes. Excuses. You hear them every day. That's right. Matter of fact, when sometimes when we go to church, people would text. He ain't gonna make it this morning. That's right. He ain't feeling too good. Sometimes you don't even need to make excuses. Just say why you ain't going to be there. 
That's right. Amen. Amen. Quit trying to justify. That's right. Amen. I'm not going to be there this morning. They don't even have, they don't call sometimes. They just give you the text now. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tell you why they won't be there and just be straight up and just say the right thing. But come Monday, though. That's right. They're going to be at work. Especially if it's OT time, time and a half. They're going there with the leg broke or whatever. They're going to get paid. That's right. They don't make no excuse to make it no money. Somebody about to give you some money, you don't, you will make it if you, you, you if somebody got to carry you there. But time you got to get to church, you call the man of God needs you, your support. Guess what? I can't make it. I got some things I got to do. My son acting up. My daughter acting up. But you know you need to be. You see, you if you if you get to church, uh -huh. God can work on yes, that situation. Yes, get somebody to tell you know come together with you and pray with you Amen. about your situation. God can handle. Don't you think somebody get tired of excuses? Yeah. Anybody got cheering in the building? Amen. Amen. All you got to do is ask them where you be. <laughs> <laughs> then the next question is, why were you there? Yeah. The excuse comes in. Yeah. I had to drop so and so off. <laughs> And I just stayed there just for a little while, and, and then something else happened. I mean, the excuses, you know, excuses are a lie. Yes. Yeah. Some of these excuses that we make are lies. And, and the reason I can say it, because I made excuses myself. Yeah. But when you got some honor and integrity about yourself, yeah. see, when you become a man, Mm -hmm. You put away all that childish mess. Uh -huh. And you begin to think about your integrity. That's right, amen. Who you are. Yeah. How you were raised. That's right. And you might not feel it now, but one day it will. Yes. That you have an obligation that you must fulfill. Yeah. Amen. Not because of how people feel about you. Uh -huh. But because you honor uh, something about yourself. Yes. Years ago, when the war broke out, uh -huh. and they were calling everybody back, I was in church, and they asked me if I wanted to be the pastor then. I didn't make no excuses. I told the bishop, God didn't call me to be no pastor. <laughs> Another man would have said, you took it. But I didn't take it. And about that time, the next day, they gave me a call and told me that I had to report. And we was in church, and they told us I was going to be gone for a little bit. And a minister told me, tell them that your back, have, you have problems with your back. Uh-huh. <laughs> and which I did. <laughs> I jumped out of airplanes, did a lot of things that it caused me pain. But I told her, I don't do things like that. I will answer the call. 
knowing that I may not make it. I said, because I live on my reputation. I will not make excuses saying that I can't make it somewhere because my back hurt. And all them boys died. Jesus. And we want to stay home. To be around my family when they ain't around their family. I told her I was offended. Because I'm not a coward. Thank you, Lord. I will stand my ground. Amen. Amen. And I find that in the church now. Jesus. Some of y'all need to get some backbone. Uh -huh. Men need to stand up and be what? Men. Amen. Stop making excuses why you can't do something. That's right. Why you can't be a man of God, a true man of God, and stop making excuses why you can't go and be with your pastor. Sometimes somebody say, I can't even sing a song. Why come you can't sing a song? My, well, my throat is a little parched. <laughs> but it's time for men to get they put the strap the boots up and get ready. Amen. Get ready for battle. Yes. And this battle that we got to fight yes. is fighting for God. Yes. And see, we got to put it in, get ready to do what God will is. Yes. The will is of God is to tell people that they must be born again. Yes. It ain't no time to make people feel good about themselves. Amen. See, people want to feel good and, and, and make you feel like you're all right when you're not all right. Amen. If you're around here hormoning, you ought to tell them so. Amen. If you're around here lying and, and doing all that, tell them so. Amen. You ain't going nowhere if you ain't living right. Amen. Ain't no need to justify and tell somebody just because they paying a little money in the church. That's right. If you wrong, you wrong. That's what's wrong with everybody. <laughs> Telling them they're right when they're wrong. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you make excuses. Go to the schoolhouse sometime when your child acting up. <laughs> and you'll blame the teacher. When you know your own child. No. My son had me to go out there one time. Me and my wife. They called him telling he was skipping class. Making excuses. When we got there, they thought the, the teacher was scared. They thought we were going to say something. We listened to everything they had to say. And when they were done, I turned to him and I said right there in front of him, son, when you get home, I'm going to deal with you. <laughs> and the teacher looked at them, the principal, and looked at each other and they said, well, he's not that bad of a kid. He, he's not that. I said, if you call me and my wife out here. <laughs> and I was still working. And she working. He has something to answer to when he get to the house. Mm -hmm. Amen. So the principal grabbed my son and hugged him. <laughs> and told him he was sorry. <laughs> Escorted him out and hugged him all the way down, crying about it. I didn't know your daddy was like that. <laughs> because there is no excuse. There is no excuse. That's the truth. Your behavior, That's right. I will not allow you to go around here acting the way you are. Yes. The stats tell us that 99% of failures are people who have a habit I'm making excuses. That's right. You go on any job and you go out there and keep making them excuses. Yeah. You see how long you're going to stay there. Supposed to be on work Monday and you late. And then you make that excuse. 
He let that one get by. Do it again. Then wait about a month later, they do the same thing again. This time he writes it down. The next time, it might be three, four months, he do it again. He documents it. He might say it's all right. But he put it on paper. And then one day, he calls you in the office and tells you that it's not really, it's not working out. And they let you go. And that's why you got a lot of men don't have no job. That's the truth. They make excuses why they can't do anything. But they can go and play a game all night long. They can play Call of Duty. <laughs> and you can see men out there on the street in Wilmington. Got them signs. Tell my we'll work for for food. But if you offer them a job, they're not gonna take it. They're making excuses. And if you can stand out in that hot heat, and that sun, like I can't even do it myself. No hat on your head. You can make it, you can, you can work a job. I was always taught as a young man, if a man don't work, I didn't have a father to teach me that, I had some uncles. And my uncles would tell me, if you don't get out there and cut that grass, you don't eat today. And I didn't believe what he said. <laughs> they went to McDonald's, he said, you stay in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> and then on, because you know, people from the city don't have the same attitude as the country folks do. Right. 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 We have to be cruel. They have to show it to us. Mm -hmm. And after that, I work. <laughs> Where's the people that don't work in church? What is the excuse that you have that you don't work? Pastor need help yes. in every church. They need yes. every church need help. That's true. But people make excuses why they can't work. Some of y'all got some beautiful voices, but you won't sing. Uh -huh. Some people could be awesome deacons. But the problem they got, they always making excuses why they can't do something. Don't want to do this, don't want to do that. But you got to put work in. Amen. If you want your church to grow, what you got to do? Work. work. Well, what is the problem with us? We don't want to work. We don't want to work. Why is it that we can work at a job and do double overtime, 80 hours in a week, but we can't spend but maybe one hour in the church. That's all right. And you tell the pastor, I need to be out of here. That's right. In an hour. That's right. I'll have people tell me, and I'm just talking to you, that you preach too long. <laughs> and I ain't preach no more than about 15, 20 minutes sometimes. Sometimes 30 minutes. But then some people, some, some message got to go forth. Some things got to be told. Amen. Just like them old prophets. If, if, if I was one of them old prophets back in the day, they preached so long. Yeah. Paul preached so long and the man fell out. Amen. Then when he got the man after he fell down and died, yeah. brought him back. Amen. Then took him right back up there. Amen. And preach some more. <laughs> but y'all get mad with, with somebody like me for going over two minutes. <laughs> you don't want to hear nothing. The Bible says in Luke 14 and 18, it said that all with they began to make excuses. 
You can define an excuse as a release from your obligation. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Jesus shared this parable to show man that God has an abundance of provision for all in his awesome plan for salvation. Yes. Yes. We find that everyone was invited to this great banquet. Yes. But when it came time to arrive, Everyone started making excuses. Yes. Listen, if you will, they were all invited. Mm -hmm. Normally, in the old days, they, they already considered that they were going to be there. Mm -hmm. They already told them that they were going to be there. Yes. But we find that when it was time for the banquet, uh -huh. They didn't say nothing until uh, that day. Yeah. And they all began to make those excuses. Yes. The first excuse we see is that the property owner brought some land and he wanted to go look at it. Uh -huh. Whoever knows anybody knows anything about land, you don't wait to go see no land at the last minute. <laughs> You got to go see that land as soon as you can and make sure that the land is good. Amen. And make sure that it is a proper soil. Yeah. And we find that he said he going to look at it. Some said that uh, he looked at it, want to go look at it at night. Now why in the world would you want to look at some land at the night when you don't know where nothing at? But wait a minute, he, he brought it up and, and, and before he, he, he told them, I, I got to go look at it. That's all right. And there's nothing wrong with buying property uh -huh. and making right. investment. Yes. But as a matter of fact, it's the wise thing to do to, to, to go look at the property. Yes. But the problem comes when those things draw you away from the things of God. Yes. Right. It's all right to have something. But don't let that get you in, in, a, in a problem. Amen. The problem comes and don't even become excuses for you to miss the mark Amen. in the purpose of your life. Amen. See, possessions can weigh us down. Yes. Driving these fancy cars. Yes. Everybody want everybody to know where they live at. Mm. Your house look better than the church. <laughs> But you all right with the church looking like it looks. That's all right. When you looking through the Bible, you find that Jesus wants his, his, his house of a prayer to be something. Yes. And when he built his temple, it was built with something. Yes. Gold, Gold, brass, yes. silver, yes. best wood. Yes. He put it all in there. Yes. But see, what, what we do now is make excuses why we can't have it that way. Amen. This is a possession of God. Amen. But we make excuses Amen. why we can't do anything. Yes. Now look at what the second one is. The second one is a rancher. The Bible says that he has to prove the options. He got to prove it. And he needed to go try them out. Yeah. Because he was a farmer. See, they didn't have no tractors back then. That's right. They needed those oxen to That's right. build them roads up. Mm -hmm. And so he needed to prove it at night. Yeah. They had no lights back then, neither. Yeah. And how many of us, them tractors you got now, you probably can do it, but I don't see too many farmers out there at night, even with. Um, that equipment. On time you see them out there is when they well, bringing in the crops. But when you're going out here trying to prove something, yeah. and you got to go when the man, I just don't understand. When I was a young man, I liked to party. I liked to go to parties. I liked to eat. Now some of y'all love to eat, don't you? 
Now, if somebody asks you to their house and they got a big thing to eat, we're going to eat some crab legs, we're going to eat some steak. We're going to get all this, and, and, and would you miss that party? Some of y'all know that. Y'all ain't, some of y'all going to get the meal back there. <laughs> That's all right. And, 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 and some of us don't miss no meals. But when the man asks you to come to be, to a blessing, a, 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 a banquet, of that kind of magnitude. Yes. Don't many people miss it. Yes. Because, but this rancher, but see, they all coming together talking about, I got to go look at my, my, my ox. I got to look at my, my, my five oxen. Mm -hmm. Instead of going to the party that you already promised to go to. Amen. And then look at the third one. He says that he getting married. Mm -hmm. Jesus. How many put their husband and their spouse above God? You won't even go to church because your husband or your wife. Last Sunday when we were here, I think it was on Thursday Sunday, I, I listened to the other pastor that was preaching. There's something she said that struck me. She said she woke up in the morning when her husband, when they wake up in the morning, she say, she got up, she tell her husband, it's time to pray. Mm -hmm. They got up in agreement. The mm -hmm. They make no excuse. I'm tired. They just go down and pray. Mm -hmm. Why is it that we can't do the same? Mm -hmm. And start making excuses, you know, because sometimes we let our jobs get in the way. Mm -hmm. I know we got, a lot of us got jobs that prevent us from doing certain things, but we can't let the job get involved, get in the way of serving God. Amen. Amen. We can't let the possessions that we have stop us from serving the Lord. That's true. Some of us will work all our life and get all this abundance of stuff. And then once we get everything we want, we stop going to church. We like to wear fancy clothes. We like to have the Cadillac. It's all right to have all that. Yeah. But the thing is, we got to be in, and we got to serve God. That's right. Yeah. That's what we, have. we served him in the beginning. That's right. When we didn't have nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then when we start getting stuff, we stop. Yes. And then we don't want to do anything. We on a time constraint. We don't want to, want to, we, it's time, when it's time to pray. At our church, we call prayer. And hardly, when we call, we just, I said, we just going to go pray. Jesus. You cannot get nobody mm. to just go down and pray and bend down and bend at knee. Everybody want to stand. Nobody want to kneel. That's what you used to turn for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. That's what we used to get work done. Yes, sir. Work is done on what? Your knees. Yes, if you want something solved, what you have to do? Get on your knees. Just because you married don't mean that we can't serve God. Yes, Amen. Amen. And some of us, like I said, it's time to change the order of the way we're doing things. Yes. Right. And stop making excuses for why we can't do certain things. That's right. There's sick people, just like Diane, for instance. She sings even when she's sick. She sings even when she feels good. She plays the good child. She even plays the drum. She even helps her husband paint houses. But she never makes an excuse how she feels. Amen. But every one of us in here has an excuse. Just like some of us right now saying to yourself, he preaching too long. <laughs> <laughs> He's not saying it the way I want to say it. 
<laughs> I really don't care no more. <laughs> I don't have to worry about nobody paying my bills. Yeah. I don't have to live off the church. Yeah. Only thing I got to do is give the word. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, I don't want to need a hand tap on that. But that's the job. The job is to preach the gospel. The job is to preach it in season and out of season. Preaching when people feel good, when people want to hear you, when they don't want to hear you. Preaching when people mad with you. Get out here and just give the word the way God gives it to you. Give it raw if you have to. Don't make nobody, see you're not here to make nobody feel good. That's the problem that we got now. That's why these preachers are gone crazy now. When you can get out here and you hanging out with the hoodlums and doing things. But see, you don't want to hear me, but you'll turn your TV on and listen to a preachers and these preachers that say they're doing this and that. You don't know how they're living. Well, I love you. But then when it's time to put you in the ground, and when you need some money in your hand to help pay that light bill, you go ahead and you dial that number and see if they're going to send you a check. <laughs> <laughs> they only receive. They don't give nothing out. <laughs> only thing they give you, let us pray for you. And I tell you right now, they're probably reading that from the thing while they get it to you. <laughs> they have done it so much. Amen. Amen. You ever been to a wreck? You ever been to a funeral home? What, what, when you go to a funeral home, when they do the funeral in there, the man done done it so much. How Bobby Dunn say it? <laughs> it's the human touch. <laughs> <laughs> You got it down pat. That's when you're going down there. We got to live right, people. Yeah. We got to stop making excuses. Yeah. Why we can't be, why we can't work Amen. for the Lord. Amen. You can work for the Lord doing anything. Yes. You can open the door, as Jim said. You can be at the door key. Yeah. David said he'll be a door key. Yes. As long as I can make it in. Yes. You're around here thinking that everything is all right. Everything is not all right. We feel good now, for right now. We don't know what's ahead for us. Nothing. We need to get ourselves together. We need to be on prayer watch. We need to be fasting. We need to come together as one. We don't need to be talking about churches. We need to be talking about the body of Christ. We need to come together and start talking about one another. We need to love one another. Stop preaching this separatism, all this other mess we got going on. We need to have this. Everybody needs to come together. And stop making excuses why you can't support one another. And I hate to say it. Some people, we just like crabs in a burrow. We're always talking about one another. Uh -huh. And then you make an excuse why you got to talk about because you don't like it. If you're going to be in God, in God. you got to love one another. Yes. Ain't no man going to make it easy if you don't love your brother. Amen. That's the first commandment. Amen. The second one, love your brother. Love. The problem we got, we don't love one another. I let somebody look at somebody and say, I love you. I love you. Look at somebody you don't know. Matter of fact, look at somebody you 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 just you you've been talking about. I dare you to look at somebody and tell you. I'm looking at you at the same time. Tell somebody you love, not your family member. It's easy to tell your my wife, baby, I love you. <laughs> but what about looking at the young man and, and telling the young man that you love? I love you, my brother. I love you, Pastor. 
Let's hear some love in here. Tell somebody you love them. Tell somebody need this love this morning. Don't make no excuses. Somebody say, I can't say it. I just can't get no words out of my mouth. Let me tell you this right here, and then we get ready to close. My mother-in-law is the one that got me talking about love. I come from New York. And when I came to New York, we don't tell nobody we love them. Amen. We give them the eye. <laughs> you look at him, and then you wonder in your head why he's looking at me like that. That's not right. That's the way it is now. Yeah. When you pass somebody, you, 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 you're not looking at them, you're glancing. Because yeah. you're looking at somebody, they might take it offense. And so my mother-in-law told me one day, we were sitting in the day, and she told me, she said, I want you to tell your brother. My brother was living during that time. Me and him didn't even say love each other. We knew we loved each other. But she said, tell your brother that you love. I said, what? <laughs> I said, he knows I love him. And, he, and my brother said, he, he, he knows it too. We, we don't do stuff like that. But then she said, just do it for me. So I told my brother, I said, I love you. <laughs> I said it out the proper way. And he said, I love you. <laughs> and finally, one day before he passed, I was able to tell my brother, I love you. Amen. Genuine love. Amen. See, you, don't, you can't get this thing unless you work with it. Amen. And we have to work on ourselves each and every day. And I'm being serious right now is that if we want to make it to heaven, we got to have love for one another. It does not matter what color you are. We have to have love for one another. And we got to quit making excuses about why you can't do stuff. Because if you can go to work every day and for the man and not make any excuses, some people ain't don't miss no day of work. My son, he go to work an hour early every day. Mm. When he go to work, I told him he's a cop, he's a police officer. I said, why are you going to work an hour early? I mean, he's there an hour early. He been doing this for about two or three years. And I said, your daddy ain't never <laughs> <Been an hour. laughs> I'm there when it's time to be there. And I don't get out of the car until it's time, 15 minutes till for the briefing. But he's there an hour and sometimes two hours. And I told him one day, I said, but then when it's church time, he can't make it there. And he's, I said, you, you can get to work a whole hour early, but you can't get to church but an hour late. <laughs> and I said, hi, God, I'm going to bless you, son. You have to tell people. Don't worry about nobody getting offended. Do your job. Start telling people the truth now. Stop lying and, and, and making excuses why you can't tell the truth. The problem is we from the pool pit, we trying, we trying not to offend nobody. I ain't got to worry about nobody in here. Nobody writing no checks for me. Ain't nobody doing nothing. Right. So that means I just go and tell the truth. Yeah. Right. And when you ain't got to fight me back. Now some days you can huff and puff, but sometimes you need to let the people know. Yeah. You need to quit making these excuses mm -hmm. and start doing your job. Mm -hmm. Because in the day, in Iraq, I was a different man. If a man didn't do his job, he got you killed. They didn't do their job that they're supposed to. And we ain't talk to him kindly. If he calls you and didn't do what he's supposed to do, it was harsh treatment. Mm -hmm. We had them guys in the mud, and we had them out doing leg lifts. If that 50 cal didn't fire because you didn't clean it, punishment was on the way. Punishment is on the way for us if we don't do our job. Amen. You might not get it from me, but one day you're going to get it from God. Amen. 
You should have done your job. Tell somebody you must be born again. Tell somebody you got to be saved. We're around here telling people they saved. You ain't saved. The Bible says, brother, brother, I say to you, you must be born again. This ain't no game. We think this is a game. We can't send nobody to heaven or hell when they did. No matter how much you preach up here and no matter how good you sound when you preach it, you cannot raise the dead. Only one I've seen do it. More than one. But what time in this day and time you see somebody get somebody out of that tomb, out of the grave? You get one opportunity to repent. And you everybody think that they can repent when they on, when they on their dying, when they die. You ain't thinking about repent. Only thing I hear is they call for sometimes they call for their mama, sometimes they be calling for, you know, help me. They don't have no words sometimes. Some of them can't say because they have so much pain. But a lot of us think we got time. Time is winding down. Yes. 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 Stand to your feet. And y'all still think you got time. Keep on doing what you're doing. This piece is for yourself and your family members. Tell somebody you need to get saved. Somebody will tell you I'm already saved. But hey, tell them anyway. Ain't nobody said that, did it? I dare somebody. Tell somebody you get saved. And I'm going to tell you another thing. You need to repent daily. You need to repent daily. Because some thoughts you, some thoughts you have. You know how people do, they cut in front of you sometimes. You know the thoughts that come through your head. And a lot of y'all say y'all hold it. You hold it 24-7. No such thing. We make mistakes. And we have a man that can help us. Bow your head and pray. Is there anyone that's out prayer for any one thing this morning? If you're sick in your body and you desire prayer, we want to ask you if you'd like to come forward for prayer. Matter of fact, if you're not saved this morning, you want to be saved. We ask you to come forward. And we know everybody's not saved. But if you would like the opportunity, this opportunity is here. If there be someone sick in their body right now and they desire prayer, if you have a family member that desire prayer this morning, you can come forward. If you desire God to do something for you, and you know you can't do it yourself, God can do it. And while you're standing there, you don't have to tell me anything. I want you to tell God about this morning. Tell God what your desires. Tell him what you need done. I don't have no power, but I know a man that has power yes, all in his hand. Yes, sir. Tell him all about it. When you look to the hill, which come up your hill, tell him about it. Take a moment, just a second, just to tell God. God also gives you your desires to you. You may have needs, God can hear that too. Yes, sir. And He often give you your wants. Yes, Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for this opportunity. Yes, Father, we ask you right now, we this group that is standing right here. Yes. Father, you know their needs right now. Yes. Father, we ask you to meet their needs right now yes. in the name of Jesus. You know that all power is in your hand. Yes. God, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to do this, God. Yes, Lord. 
Oh God, if you do, we promise to give your name the praise. Father, they need your help right now. God, it may be finances, God. It may be healing, God. It may be deliverance, God. God, we ask you to do it right now. God, it can be one of their loved ones that need you right now. And God, we ask you, Lord Jesus, oh God, to, to bring it to, to pass, God. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Father, we come against the enemy right now that's trying to hinder these people. We bind the devil right now in the name of Jesus. And loose your power and your Holy Ghost, God. Oh God, to have your way right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we ask you to do it right now. Oh God, we ask you as we lift up our hands, we say thank you. And we act as though we receive it right now. Oh God, do we not see it? We don't see it, but we believe it. And we stand upon your word right now. And we receive what you have for us. Whether it be finances, do it. And you promise to give your name to Christ. In the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
give honor to God our Father and Jesus Amen. Christ, our precious Lord and Savior. Yes. Amen. Because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't even be here today. Right. Amen. Right. And also, I give honor to the shepherd of this house, the First Lady, um, Pastor Corbett, um, Everett. Um, I give, and, and anyone else that in this house that God has placed in the office as far as bringing forth the word. Amen. Amen. I'd also like to honor my wife, um, if you don't mind standing up. Uh, this is my wife, Katrina. My wife, Ashley. That one day, they had the hour of the church, Elder Walters. And our grandbaby, Kushan. I think that's going to come and me today. And I, I would like to encourage, I would like to encourage each and every one of you that is sick today. And if you don't mind, I'd like to give a short testimony. First of all, God has set forth in our hands the ministry of healing. In fact, he told us to name it Emmanuel's Healing Ministry. You remember when Jesus, when he rose from the dead, and the disciples, they were going on what road? Emmanuel's, right? We stay on Emmanuel's church road. Amen? So God said, you name the, the ministry that I have given to you. He made his healing ministry. And I understand why God did this. And that's the reason why I encourage each and every one of you that are sick to believe and trust in the Lord. I mean really believe and trust in the Lord for your healing. And let me give you an example. I had two strokes. This right side was completely, completely paralyzed. Amen. Amen. And I stayed before the Lord. I stayed into his word. And one day, I was in Goldsboro. We stayed next to Goldsboro. We stayed in this little town called Dudley. I was going around the traffic circle. All of a sudden, my car filled up with smoke. And I'm thinking, whenever I first saw it, I'm thinking, Maybe it's the radiator. <laughs> and I hadn't been saved long right. at that time. I, I'd only been saved maybe about eight or nine months. Right. But I kept telling God, and God, I believe that you're going to heal me. I, you, right. you told me that your son, by his stripes, I was healed. That's, right. That's what first Peter told us. Right. I said, even though my body don't reflect that, I still believe that you're going to heal me. Right. And so I realized that that was a radiator smoke. I'm, I'm driving a BMW. Right. You understand what I'm saying? I'm driving BMW. This BMW have no business having any smoke here. <laughs> it was the Chicago glory. Right. God spoke in my ear. He said, you should go and thank me because I have just healed your body. Amen. I was going to pay bills, made a beeline home, opened the door, fell on my knees. Thank God. Thank God. That's right. Amen. As you can see, I'm not paralyzed anymore. I basically had lost all my memory when I had those two strokes. I barely knew close family members like my mom and stuff like that. Now look at me. I remember scripture. <laughs> but it didn't stop me. I used to, I was under Apostle Dennis Jacobs. And he put me to head of the healing team. And I would be going to pray for people. And my heart was still hurt. And I'm saying, Lord, what is going on? Uh, I would have to call my mom. Mama, pray for me. I'd go lay hands on the sick and they get healed. I mean, I stand there and see them getting healed and I'm still hurt. Went to the VA hospital and they said, you got congestive heart failure. You got a bad case. In fact, we need to do some surgery now. So they said, you need to think about this for a few minutes and give us an answer of what? you want us to do. I said, hold on. I went back to the visiting area. I said, give me about 10 minutes. I talked to God. I said, God, 
I said, I realize that you put these doctors here for, for a reason. In fact, Luke was a doctor, one of the disciples. I said, but you said that by your certain stripes I was healed. So I told God, I said, God, I said, I'm not going to let them do anything. If you don't heal me, bring me home. I haven't gone home, have I? I'm completely healed. I had gotten cancer in my in my uh, kidney and my liver. It used to hurt every day on this side here. God allowed me to start uh, be uh, be on radio preaching and every Sunday morning, and we still do. Seven forty-five to eight thirty. Normally, every night I go to bed after I finish studying, 8.30. Why? Because then I would have to go to the radio station. It's not like it is now. We got cell phone. We can preach from anywhere. My wife and I, we go on vacation. Don't make no difference where, where we go on vacation at. Right. On Sunday morning, 7 45, get on, on, on our telephones. Right. We preach on radio. Right. Amen? Right. So, that particular night, I went to bed, it was about 11 o'clock, because I studied a little bit longer than usual. As I lay in my bed, I just laid in my bed. I saw a figure, a gray figure at my door, walk between the bed and walk between the TV. Came around on my right side, stuck his hand through my side, pulled his hand out. There was this thing that was glowing. He said, this is that spirit of pain. He turned around, walked back to the door, disappeared. I haven't heard since. That's been about 15 years ago. That's the living. On this particular night, normally I get up, and my wife still, she will tell you still, I get up 2, 3 o'clock, it don't matter. When God wake me up, I know he's waking me up for right. On this particular night, when I went in my living room to pray, I don't have a sunroof in my house. I don't have a skyliner in my house. When I walked in the living room, I looked up when I started praying. I saw the stars. I realized I felt like I was in heaven and I was talking with God. When I finished praying, and I went back to my room just as soon as I closed the door. There was a ball of fire that started at my right foot. It seemed like it was about that big around. But it wasn't a burning fire that hurt. And I knew what it was. It was the Holy Ghost. It was a soothing burning. And it came up all the way up, all the way across, and went out at the end, of, at the bottom of this left foot. No more. No more. Liver problems. Wow. My records, my records reflect all of these things that I have told you that have went wrong, but also it reflects that I am here. Amen. So I just, I, I, I just want to let you see, let you know, God is still in the healing business. In fact. He's giving you the authority and the power. Yes. That's what he has done. Yes. Take that power. Take that authority. He said in Luke 10, chapter 19, he said, I give you power over the serpent, That's right. power over all, uh, and the scorpion, and power over all the power of the enemy. Right. You have that power yes. because he is in you. Yes. Right. Brothers and sisters, again, continue Amen. to have faith Right. In God. Amen. Faith in God. Amen. I have certainly enjoyed this service Amen. and I'm certainly glad that Amen. my brother George ever invited me here today. Amen. And I'll tell you, George and I we go back a long ways in the military. Amen. And I'm gonna say like some of the close brothers would say, at that time there won't no God in sight. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no God That's right. Yeah. I'm an apostle now, but I haven't been saved all my life. Amen. Amen. 
So that lets you know, God, he'll take the worst ones. He'll take the worst ones. And he can clean you up. And he can, he can do some marvelous work for you. Yes, he will. That's what he'll do. Amen. Amen. And I would like to extend the invitation also. And I'm, I'm finishing. Sometimes I can be a little long with it. But every Sunday morning at 745 AM 1430 radio. FM 102.5. It's my wife, me, and our Lord. We be bringing forth the word. Also, every Saturday night, if you have Spectrum cable at 730 WHFL, channel 21. 7.30. Recharge. Amen. Bring forth the word. Amen. 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 God bless each and every one of you. Amen. And we love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. 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 Let's stand to our feet. We thank God for that, that wonderful testimony that God Amen. is a healer. Amen. We got evidence. Yes. Amen. Just in say. I did want to say one thing about before we leave. Uh, Pastor Everett said that um, he, he every day he he thinks that God he's a he's a man. <laughs> I, I, I want to say what James Brown said. James Brown said there's a man world, but it wouldn't be nothing without. Oh, well, <laughs> right. 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 see, see, he said that but his wife ain't here. <laughs> 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 Let us bow our head in prayer. Father God, in the name, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. We thank God for the apostle God for the wonderful yes. testimony that you brought yes. for how God healed his body. Yes. Let us know that God can still in the healing business. Yes. 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 Lord, we thank God for um, each and every one's here. Yes. We thank God that there be a blessing, Lord Jesus, for yes. each one. Yes. The way they came in, Lord Jesus, that there be a blessing when they go out, Lord Jesus. Yes. 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 Let me be the same the way they came in, God. Lord, we thank you all for all the things that you do and the things that you're about to do, Lord. Yes. Yes. God, yes. as we get ready to depart, we ask you to let, let us depart in love, God. Yes. And God, as we get ready to depart, we ask you to bless this food, God. Yes, yes, yes. Bless the hands that prepare it. Yes, yes. Let it be nourished with our body. In Jesus' name yes. we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.